He was an almighty neckbeard. I know many people give the neckbeards in their stories creative names, but I can't think of anything good, so I'll just call him Michael because that was his name. He and I lived in a dorm apartment with two other people. We had four single rooms, so while I say that Michael was my roommate, he and I didn't actually sleep in the same room. Michael was about 5 foot 10 and fat. If I had to guess, I would say he weighed maybe 250 pounds. He had short black hair, which he cut himself with a pair of hair clippers he bought at Walmart. He did have a beard, but it wasn't really a neck beard. Michael's hygiene was fine, I guess. I have nothing really positive or negative to say about it. Michael spent most of his day in his room. He left our apartment to go to class or to get food, but besides that, he mostly stayed locked in his room. He spent almost all his free time playing video games in his room, especially World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, and and Super Smash Bros., which I will discuss in a minute. He also always wore the same outfit. Sweatpants, an anime or video game shirt, and grubby sneakers. I never saw him wear a fedora, unfortunately. Michael's diet consisted of Monster Energy, Coca-Cola, Doritos, and fast food. He did enjoy Mountain Dew, because of course, but his main beverages were Monster and Coke. Many neckbeards like to think of themselves as really smart, but Michael genuinely was intelligent. He was studying electrical engineering and he had a high GPA too. I think it was about 3.7 or 3.8. Electrical engineering is generally considered the hardest discipline of engineering, which is already a very difficult field. He wouldn't be able to do that well in a field such as that if he weren't smart. I rarely ever saw Michael do schoolwork though. I'm guessing he did it late at night when I was asleep. The story that best captures Michael's neck beardery involved his interest in Super Smash Bros. All four of us liked to play Smash Brothers Brawl together on Michael's Wii in our living room. But Michael was constantly asking us to play with him. You see, Michael was obsessed, and I mean obsessed, with Zero Suit Samus. If you aren't familiar, Samus is the protagonist of Nintendo's Metroid series. She usually wears a suit of power arm, but when she takes the armor off, she's just wearing a skin-tight bodysuit. And that version is called Zero Suit Samus. Samus is a very attractive individual, and the Zero Suit definitely shows off her body, much to Michael's enjoyment. Michael always played as her when we played Super Smash Brothers. Michael often often talked about how she was incredibly sexy and how he just wishes he could have a girlfriend like her. That was truly Michael's goal, to have a girlfriend that looked like Samus. He made a Tinder account for that exact purpose. The issue was that he only swiped right on girls who looked like Samus, that is tall blonde girls with athletic builds. These girls, however, were not interested in a neck beard like Michael. Michael also went to parties to pick up girls. The same issue existed here, though. He was only interested in girls who looked like Samus. These girls were certainly not interested in Michael. I'm sure Michael could have gotten a girlfriend, but he was only interested in a very specific faction of very attractive women. So his romantic prospects went unreciprocated. When we played Smash Brothers, Michael would sit there drooling, and I mean literally drooling, as in with his mouth hanging open and saliva slowly meandering down his Dorito crusted lips and off his chest. Chin. Michael could be very good at Smash Brothers when he actually tried, but he spent as much time gawking at Samus's ass as he did actually playing the game. Naturally, when Smash Ultimate was set to be released in December of that year, Michael was extremely excited. We were all excited, but while the other three of us were excited to play a new and interesting game, Michael was excited to drool over Samus in a new and improved high definition. On release day, all four of us went to the mall to get the game since Michael had pre-ordered it at GameStop. I don't remember anything particularly memorable happening on the trip itself. What I do remember was Michael's car. The inside was full of monster and coke 
cans, empty Dorito bags, and empty fast food containers. This garbage heap was particularly bad on the floor in front of the passenger seat, which is where I sat. Michael's detritus crunched and crinkled under my feet as I sat there on the way to the mall. I remember trying to push the cans and wrappers out of the way during our drive, and by the time we got to the mall, I had managed to clear a space of bare floor to put my feet on. When we got back, we of course spent the rest of the afternoon playing Smash Ultimate. In the absence of his beloved Samus, Michael played as Link. Did Michael just have a thing for blondes? We may never know. To Michael's great arousal and my great distress, one of the characters we unlocked later that afternoon was Zero Suit Samus. When the A NEW FOE HAS APPEARED screen came up, Michael immediately recognized the outline of Zero Suit Samus. He blurted out, Oh yeah! Which sounded like something between an excited outburst and an aroused mo. Michael's wet dreams had come true. While in Smash Brothers Brawl, Zero Suit Samus had always worn a skin-tight bodysuit. In Smash Ultimate, they included her casual outfit as an option. This was basically a sports bra and booty shorts. This pleased Michael's thirsty fantasies. Reunited with his lady love, Michael happily spent the next two hours or so playing as Zero Suit Samus in the casual outfit until we stopped for the day. That night, at about midnight, I left my room to go to the bathroom. As I approached the living room, I could see the TV was turned on. That was weird, I thought. It only got worse. When I got close enough to see around the corner, I could see that the TV had Smash Ultimate on it. It was set on training mode, and Samus was standing there in her casual outfit. As I ran Rounded the corner, I saw him. Michael was on the couch, across from the TV, with his hand down the front of his sweatpants, making an unmistakable up and down motion. Oh god! At that point, I was still enough behind him that Michael hadn't seen me. I just silently backed up and went back to my room. My mind struggled to comprehend what I had witnessed. Here was this grown man sitting in the living room at midnight, jerking his gherkin to Zero Suit Samus. I knew he was infatuated with her, but good lord! Instead of looking up Rule 34 of Samus and diddling his doodle in his room like a normal person, Michael had chosen to do it to a video game in the middle of the living room while everyone else was asleep. I mean, that's better than doing it when everyone is awake. I never told anyone what I had witnessed that fateful night. In fact, this is the first I've spoken of it since it happened. The rest of the year passed relatively uneventfully. Michael spent his time in his room at the engineering building or playing Smash Brothers while drooling over Samus. He still ate mostly Doritos and fast food, but that was just the standard for Michael. There was nothing out of the ordinary for him there. The following May, Michael and I graduated. He got his degree in electrical engineering and got a job designing the control systems for industrial machines. I never saw Michael after we graduated, but the memory of him will last 